Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at how you can make good measurements. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at are just two simple examples of using a ruler to make measurements. So think about all of the measurements you've made, right, using a ruler before. And typically this is what one side of the ruler looks like. It's measured uh, in inches and you have a set number of lines. So when you're making a measurement, you're always going to be limited by the number of little increments you have in order to better your estimation. So for example, I know that this is somewhere between two inches and three inches. And then by having these lines, now I can make a more educated guess. I can make a more educated estimation. So I know this is a fourth, this is a half, this is three fourths. So I know somewhere between two and three fourths and three inches is where this actual crayon uh, length lies. Now, here are my choices. Now, if I were to be, let's say, generous here, um, I could say that two of these measurements would be uh, correct or could be correct, and the other two would be incorrect. Now, you might think, okay, uh, take a guess, right? We have A, B, C, or D. Which ones do you think would be correct and which ones would be definitely a little less than correct? So here's how this works. Uh, you're always limited by the number of increments you have, and so, um, like I said, we know it's somewhere between two and three fourths and three. Now, if this were any other measuring device that isn't using a weird unit like inches, uh, we'd be limited uh, by a single digit. And the reason why we'd be limited by a single decimal digit here is because uh, we have no other little mini increments that are breaking this into smaller uh, chunks. So for example, I could say it's 2.9 inches or 2.8 inches, but I couldn't say it's 2.95 inches, and I couldn't say it's 2.85 inches. Now the reason why I couldn't say this is because I don't have increments that allow me to make an estimation to two decimal places. I really have barely enough, right, to get one decimal place worth of estimation. So in other words, the digit that is known is the two here, and then the digit that is unknown is definitely this here at the end. And so somewhere between those two values, uh, again, it's up to you. I'd say it's probably closer to 2.8, but again, it's an estimation. This last digit is an estimation. The only digit that's for sure is the two. And so that's how you would make a sample estimation uh, using you know, just a regular ruler. Now here's even a worse one, okay? Here's a pencil. Uh, take a guess as to what its length would be in centimeters. Now, this has no increments other than just one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, etc. So, using what you just learned here, which two do you think would give us um, a possible correct estimation, and the other two would give us incorrect estimations? You probably figured it out already. It's this here. Again, I have no other little increments, so I am limited in just looking at this digit here as being my estimated digit. If I had smaller increments, like if I could tell this is 15.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, etc., then I could make an estimation like this and say, okay, that's 15.85 centimeters or whatever it might be. But the only two possible good choices would be these two here. Now again, this is kind of unrealistic because we have just, you know, uh, no increments broken up here uh, between uh, this centimeter and that centimeter, but still, like, um, just that's the idea behind making good estimations and good measurements. Uh, how much liquid is there in these two graduated cylinders? So we only have one in this picture right now, but there will be another one on the other page. So here's a mistake that people commonly make, and it's probably not one that you'd even think of. The first thing that I always do is look at your increments so that you can make an, a good um, estimation. So I have 30 and I have 40, and then I have these little lines here. What do these lines represent then? 32, 34, 36, 38, and then 40. Okay. Now when you're measuring liquid in a graduated cylinder, you're looking at the lowest point. So we're looking at the meniscus is technically what it's called here. And so the meniscus will always, well, assuming we're looking at water, it will always be concave like this. And so you're always looking at this portion here, the lowest part of the meniscus. Now you should also be at eye level with it, so you should actually be looking straight directly through the graduated cylinder right where that line is. And if you're having problems making a measurement, you just put a piece of white paper behind there to help you out. So 
Again, take a guess. Two of these are going to be correct and two of them are going to be incorrect. All right, so again, I'm limited here uh, by my increments. And so with my increments, I should at least give it a guess to one decimal's worth. And the reason why is because I know with certainty this is 32. So if it was somewhere between, I could give you an estimation. It's okay, it's 32 point something. So, or it's 33 point something, right? So uh, I need to at least give you my estimation. And so I would say this is exactly on the 38. And so you might think, oh yeah, so B, 38. No, so the way that estimations work are that you would include that estimation in your value. So it would be 38.0 milliliters. And the reason why is because I know these lines with certainty. So I would give you my A here as being the correct answer. Uh, technically, none of the other ones would be correct because this is exactly on the line. All right, now, how much liquid is in this graduated cylinder? Take a guess. All right, so I'll give you my other spiel here that I like to always say. So uh, the reason why I chose these two graduated cylinders is because the increments are different. So a lot of times people would just assume, oh yeah, the increments must be the same. So this would be like 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Wait, that doesn't add up. So these increments are by one. So this is 21, 22, 23, and 24. The meniscus is somewhere between these two. So that makes it maybe a little bit easier, I guess, right? So Again, in this case, there's only one correct answer here, and that would be B, 21.5, because this is 21, this is 22, and it's somewhere between there. The only thing that is known with certainty is the 21 part, and then 0.5 is up for debate. If I'm only giving you these choices, though, B would be the correct answer. But if you said, oh, I think that's 21.4, okay, that would be a justifiable estimation for this. Okay. So anyway, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of how you make estimations and measurements. So if you have any questions, please let me know.